people stay at home longer, making it possible that people make their own choices, making it possible that they can live independently. And I think the main driving force for e-health in the next future is uh, empowering patients. Well, let's listen to the speech. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to speak here as a host, but now I'm closing what you could say a very exceptional e-health week. And it was a special week. For the first time, the e-health week followed the principles to be a patient-included conference. Not only was the, patient, uh, the program built with patients' input, where patients part of the audience in the sessions, it was also the first time a keynote presentation was delivered by a patient advocate. <laughs> Many great presentations have been given on this stage, but I heard you were all most impressed by the speech of Annika Vronitz Gerber. The speech from the patient, the speech from the heart. And I strongly believe that's what we need to do to successfully implement technology into care, the patient perspective. Care must fit to people. It cannot be the other way around. And fortunately, there are really a lot of IT applications and gadgets that make life easier and more pleasant for people who need temporary or long-term care. Smartphones, iPads, computers, smart apps have become a standard element of care already. They enable people to monitor their own health, if necessary, and communicate online with care providers. This week, many companies presented their developments and innovative ideas in the exhibition hall. They were clever devices that help vulnerable older people to continue living independently like necklaces and bracelets with built-in GPS systems, and they can help people suffering from dementia, for instance. If they stray a certain distance from home, a friend or relative is alerted. And they can make sure that mother or father gets home safely. But despite these impressive advances, e-health still isn't always accessible for everyone. Making a phone call, booking a holiday, taking a picture, watching TV, driving a car, or doing your banking. In recent years, these all have changed due to technical advances. And they are still changing. As soon as we got used to one new thing, another thing comes along. And it's all getting cheaper, faster, more user-friendly, and more attractive. Sometimes, healthcare is lagging behind. Not so much in hospitals or high-tech waiting rooms, of course, where often the latest technology is in use, but is it already in use in the daily lives of people who need ongoing care? And it's good that e-health gets a boost. So that healthcare, just like everything else in daily life, can profit from all the wonderful inventions that make our lives a bit better. And I'm proud that large technology companies such as Finns and Apple Insurers and healthcare organizations, both Oscura and Cardan, have announced this week to intensify cooperation to ensure that e-health will soon become an inherent part of our long-term care system. E-health is becoming normal. This e-health week has given a platform where businesses and academics could meet and start partnerships. And that's crucial, and the many wonderful ideas coming out of universities and colleges of technology are to progress beyond studies or garages. Creativity, creativity alone is not enough. During the last few days, of course, we talked about IT. And we also talked about the amazing power IT could bring to people. But what was really different is that we talked about society changes as well, about the need to include end users, to track investments, and how to mobilize the community. It's quite easy to talk IT with people who love tech. And it's a lot harder to create links between the tech domain and the social fields. And I think we made a big step forward on this part. The last few days have also been important in terms of what we want to achieve in the Netherlands. In three years' time, we want 80% of Dutch people with chronic illnesses 
to have access to their medical data by themselves. We want 75% of this group, along with all the people still living at home,